about 20 to 10,000 years ago, a mysterious group of hunter-gatherers known as the Ibero-Marusians occupied the western part of North Africa. For the longest time, their origins were shrouded in mystery, with various theories put forward ranging from a European origin in Iberia or Italy, to a local North African origin, to an origin in maybe the Middle East or even the Sudan. Now, with the help of ancient DNA, we're finally getting closer to the answer. I'm Madam Archaeologist, your go-to informant on everything archaeology, and in this episode, I'll dive into the genetic origins of the ibero marusians of North Africa. I'll look at what we know from ancient DNA tests done so far, and introduce you to a new ancestral lineage that was just discovered to be the ghost population that contributed about a third of their DNA to the ibero marusians of northeastern Morocco. ibero marusian is the name given to a later Stone Age culture and lithic industry found in present-day Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya, a region that's broadly called the Maghreb, from about 20,000 to 10,000 years ago. It is known for its microlithic backed blade lids, and the name ibero marusian comes from mixing Iberia, referring to the Iberian Peninsula, and Mauritania, which is the Latin name for the ancient Maghreb. This name was chosen because of similarities between the lithic industries in these two regions. It has even been hypothesized that the ibero marusian industry was brought to North Africa by hunter-gatherers from the Iberian Peninsula via the Strait of Gibraltar. While not the only hypothesis as to the origins of the ibero marusians it is an interesting one to consider because of the persistence of the name. Ancient DNA taken from the skeletons of ibero marusian associated individuals, however, have a different story to tell. This study from 2018 looked at the nuclear DNA of five individuals from a cave called Grotte des Pigeons near Tafralt in Morocco. These skeletons date to about 14 to 15,000 years ago and are associated with the ibero marusian culture. The study found no genetic link with hunter-gatherers from Europe, ruling out the hypothesis that the ibero marusian lithic industry was brought with European hunter-gatherers that migrated across the Strait of Gibraltar. Instead, it was found that the ancestry seen in the Tafralt sample could be modeled, on average, as about 63.5% Natufian-like, 36.5% some unspecified sub-Saharan African population. The Natufians were an epipaleolithic Near Eastern population indigenous to the Levant and gave rise to the first farmers in that region. Note, though, that this Levantine component in the genetic ancestry of the Tafralt ibero marusians is better called Natufian-related or Natufian-like, as opposed to derived from the Natufians themselves because the Natufian culture, as an archaeological culture, does not emerge until around 14,500 years ago. Maybe, from the population ancestral to the Natufians, some stayed in the Levant and gave rise to this group, while others migrated westward into North Africa. Or maybe hunter-gatherers with Natufian-like ancestry were more widespread in the Near East and North Africa about 20,000 years ago. This can be clarified with more ancient genomes. Still, these results show a deep genetic connection between the regions of North Africa and the Near East. This link is also not unique to the Maghreb. The ancient Egyptians that have been subjected to DNA testing so far have shown even stronger links to the Natufians and Neolithic farmers from the Levant. I explained this in detail in my episode on the DNA of the ancient Egyptians part 2. But finding this epipaleolithic Natufian-like ancestry in ancient Moroccans from about 15,000 years ago shows that the genetic ties between the two regions go back much further than many originally thought. They go back to the Stone Age. Now, for the African source seen in the ancestry of the Tafralt individuals, none of the sub-Saharan African populations, ancient and modern, known to date, were a perfect fit for representing the source of this ancestry. We were dealing, essentially, with a ghost population. That is, until now. It looks like this new study, which was just published in the journal Nature, has pinned down the source of the African ancestry seen in the Tafralt individuals. And a surprise? It isn't a sub-Saharan African group, but rather an ancestral North African lineage identified for the first time in two approximately 7,000-year-old individuals from the Takarkori rock shelter in Libya whose genomes were sequenced and published in this new paper. Who were these ancestral North Africans whose genetic lineage we've just discovered? What do we know about them? This ancient lineage was completely unknown to us until the two females from the Takarkori rock shelter were DNA tested. The Sahara, unfortunately, is a difficult region to study archaeogenetically because of the extreme aridity. Arid environments are ideal for the preservation of archaeological material, 
But aridity is terrible for DNA preservation because heat acts as a catalyst for DNA degradation. Thankfully though, with advancements in the field of archaeogenetics, we're starting to get more data and a better picture of North Africa's genetic history is starting to emerge. Anyways, this newly identified ancestral North African lineage is very ancient. It diverged, or branched off, from sub-Saharan African lineages around the same time as the lineage that led to non-African populations, that is, around 50,000 years ago. Divergence refers to the accumulation of genetic differences, or changes, between ancient populations. When enough changes accumulate, we say that populations have diverged or split. They have essentially become their own populations. This helps to increase the genetic diversity within a species. This newly identified lineage remained largely isolated throughout most of its existence, and is thus indigenous to North Africa and distinct from both Eurasian and Sub-Saharan African populations. According to the press release, Genomic analyses reveal that the ancestry of the Takakoi rock shelter individuals primarily derives from a North African lineage that diverged from Sub-Saharan African populations at about the same time as the modern human lineages that spread outside of Africa around 50,000 years ago. The newly described lineage remained isolated, revealing deep genetic continuity in North Africa during the Late Ice Age. While this lineage no longer exists in unadmixed form, this ancestry is still a central genetic component of present-day North African people, highlighting their unique heritage." End quote. Identifying this ancestral North African lineage might just be one of the greatest archaeogenetic discoveries of the year. Now, when we do population studies using ancient DNA, we can find out if one population is a mixture of others by using specially designed statistical tools or softwares. Using one particular tool called QP Adam, which checks for admixture in a sample and estimates ancestry percentages, the new study modeled the Tafralt Iberum Erusians as deriving, on average, about 60.8% of their DNA from a Natufian-like source and about 39.2% of their DNA from that seen in the Takakori individuals. The Takakori individuals themselves did not contribute their DNA to the Tafralt Iberum Erusians, of course. They lived seven to 8,000 years after Tafralt. But their genetic ancestry provides a good proxy for the source of the African ancestry seen in Tafarult. We can see this clearly in this graph here. We see 93% of the genetic ancestry of the Takarkori individuals deriving from the ancestral North African group, and that they also got a small contribution of 7% from very ancient Levantines. Then we've got Tafarult, who got a little over a third of their DNA from the same ancestral North African population that the Takarkori individuals descend from, and almost two-thirds of their DNA from a Natufian-like population. This admixture between a Natufian-like population and the ancestral North Africans is a model. If a model has a p-value of at least 0.05, then it can be considered a good fit, and the higher the value, the better the fit. This model had a p-value of 0.229. It's the only model here that is statistically significant. Other populations yielded really low p-values. Given this, it looks like the Takakori individuals provide the best proxy for the African ancestry seen in the Tafarot sample. I want to briefly go over this preprint that was released in 2018. Paleolithic DNA from the Caucasus reveals core of West Eurasian ancestry, because it reassessed the genetic ancestry of the Tafarot Iberum Russians, but do note that this was before the study on the Takakori individuals came out. It is still sitting on the BioArchive preprint server and has not been published, so it hasn't been peer-reviewed. But I thought of going over what it claims and how this preprint compares to the latest 2025 study. This study states, I quote, Our co-modeling of Epipaleolithic Natufians and Iberum Erusians from Tafralt confirms that the Tafralt population was mixed. But instead of specifying gene flow from the ancestors of Natufians into the ancestors of Tafralt, as originally reported, we infer gene flow in the reverse direction, into Natufians. Moreover, our model predicts that West Africans, represented by Yoruba, had 12.5 plus or minus 1.1% ancestry from a Tafralt related group rather than Tafralt having ancestry from an unknown sub Saharan African source. An advantage to our model is that it allows for a local North African component in the ancestry of Tafralt, rather than deriving them exclusively from Levantine and sub Saharan sources. End quote. Later, regarding the Tafralt population and others, the preprint says, I quote again, the Tufians and Tafralt can all be modeled as a mixture of Zudzuana and additional deep ancestry that may represent an even earlier split than the basal Eurasians, end quote. Zudzuana is the ancestry seen in two individuals from Zudzuana Cave in Georgia dated to roughly 26,000 years ago. So according to this preprint, 
the Eurasian component in Tafrolt is better modeled as coming from Zuzuana. The preprint is interesting because that consideration of a local North African ancestral component in Tafrolt was confirmed in the 2025 study. But where the preprint might be wrong is in their prediction that a Natufian like population did not contribute their DNA to Tafrolt. The new study found a significant p value for their model that incorporates Natufians and Takar Kori. And the original 2018 study also identified a Natufian related component. With the current data, a Natufian like population is the most likely Eurasian source. The 2025 paper also aligned with the original estimate in the 2018 paper of approximately two-thirds of Tafrolt's ancestry deriving from a Natufian lake source and about one-third from an African source, which we now know was an isolated and distinct North African population with a unique genetic signature. The paper concludes, I quote, Our research offers insights into the ancestry of the previously published Tafrolt hunter-gatherers. While a previous study could not precisely ascribe the sub-Saharan component in the Tafrolt genome, we now identify this ancestry as a deep North African lineage, with higher proportions found in the Saharan Tekakori individuals. This refines the earlier model, which proposed a dual admixture of Natufian and broadly sub-Saharan ancestries. Our updated model suggests that the Tafrolt ancestry is composed of a 60% contribution from a Natufian-like Levantine population, with the remaining 40% derived from a Tekakori-like ancestral North African population." End quote. Those keywords, refined and updated, summarize the picture well because this new study doesn't contradict the first 2018 paper. The percentage of Levantine versus African DNA is very similar. What happened is that the source of the African DNA was finally clarified. These studies show just how powerful ancient DNA can be as a tool for studying the past. It is very interesting to know that rather than descending from migrating European hunter-gatherers, the ibero marusians at least in northeastern Morocco, were a mixture between ancient Levantines who migrated westward and a distinct, deep North African lineage indigenous to the region. Finally, let's go over haplogroups. These trace your direct maternal and paternal lines and give you some insights into your ancient ancestry. Mitochondrial haplogroups trace the maternal line, and Y-chromosomal haplogroups the direct paternal line, though Y-chromosomal haplogroups can only be estimated for males. Everyone that shares the same haplogroup shares the same direct maternal or paternal ancestor. So, for example, everyone who falls into a sublineage of the mitochondrial U6A haplogroup shares as ancestors on the direct maternal line the woman who developed the U mutations, the woman who developed the U6 mutations, and the woman who developed the U6A mutations. Haplogroups are useful for tracing migrations when a population carrying a very different set of haplogroups moves into a region where completely different haplogroups were the norm. In the 2018 Tafrolt study, seven individuals had their mitochondrial haplogroups estimated. Six belonged to the U6A lineage and one to M1B. U originated in Western Eurasia, with U6 specifically originating most likely in West Asia. The high frequency of U6 in North Africa today is thus associated with the migration of Southwestern Asians into North Africa. U6's time of origin is estimated to have been about 35,000 years ago, so the back migration must have been sometime after that. Note, though, that back migration doesn't necessarily mean that the same genetic population has returned to a land. We use the term back migration here simply because the origin of Homo sapiens is in Africa. That's where the genetic evidence strongly points to. Now, we have increasing evidence in favor of the hypothesis that all non-African populations today largely descend from the same migration event that took place about 50,000 years ago. And after humans left Africa, they accumulated genetic changes, and so they became their own populations indigenous to the regions they were in. So the U6 haplogroup came with people who would have been genetically quite different from the original group that migrated out of Africa thousands of years prior. The U6A subclade specifically, which was seen in the Tafrolt sample, is thought to have diversified in North Africa. What does this mean? When a haplogroup branches into different sublineages, we call this diversification. The Iberomerusians may have even been the ones responsible for the spread of the U6A haplogroup throughout the Maghreb. The haplogroup M likely originated somewhere in Asia, most likely South Asia, even though some advocate for an African origin. Like U6, the M1 lineage in particular is associated with back migration to Africa. As for Y chromosomal haplogroups, all males in the 2018 study who had theirs tested belonged to E1B1B1A1, also known as E-M78. E1B has two main sublineages, E1B1A, which is predominant in Sub-Saharan Africa, and E1B1B, 
which is associated with out-of-Africa migrations and is found predominantly in North Africa and is also seen in the Horn of Africa and parts of Western Eurasia. There was also an earlier study that estimated mitochondrial haplogroups for 23 Tafroth Iberia Mauritians before any nuclear DNA studies came out. These were assigned only to very broad haplogroups, though. There was a later study that revisited these. Many individuals came back still as H or U, but other haplogroups were more specific. A further seven skeletons from an Iberia Mauritian site in Algeria called Afalu have also had their mitochondrial haplogroups tested. These were published in the same study that revisited the Tafroth samples. Three of the individuals came back as either H or U, while the others were T2B, JT, or H14B1, J, and J1C3F. All of the haplogroups identified in the Iberia Mauritian so far are Western Eurasian in origin, and some, notably U6A, are sublineages that diversified within North Africa. This aligns with the genetic ancestry modeled for the Tafroth Iberia Mauritians in the latest paper. These haplogroups are also present in modern North African populations. And when considering just mitochondrial haplogroups, the modern population which is most similar to the Tafroth Iberia Mauritians are the Berbers of northern Morocco, suggesting a large degree of genetic continuity in the region from the Stone Age up to the present day. We cannot overestimate ancient DNA's contribution to archaeology. It's finally giving us insights into the origins of the Iberia Mauritians and helping us to trace interactions between populations over time. Hopefully, more studies will come out that will clarify whether the DNA seen in Tafroth was widespread amongst the Iberia Mauritians or if this lithic industry spread to populations in North Africa with some differences in their genetic ancestries. As the original 2018 paper states, Archaeogenetic studies on additional Iberia Mauritian sites will be critical to evaluate the representativeness of Tafroth for the Iberia Mauritian gene pool. End quote. Hopefully, as our data set for North Africa expands, we will have a more complete picture of the genetics of the Iberia Mauritians from Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya. I will, of course, keep you posted. Subscribe for more cool content where your go to informant on everything archaeology, Madam Archaeologist.